Hey up, morning, welcome back to the Yorkshire Bike Mechanics YouTube channel. My name's Dave K. I hope you're all well and you're having a good week. And it's been horrible in Sobe Bridge. It's the 8th of January, so we're well into the new year. Uh, and thank goodness that's over. Christmas, I can't do with it. Anyway, so that's that gone. We're going to be covering two things today on this video. The first one is suspension linkages on this lovely Turbo Levo here. I love this bike, it's a great bike. Um, lovely to ride, nice and quiet, nice to maintain, the quality is good. All the bolts are really well manufactured, lovely and hard in, in terms of getting them undone and stuff. They don't round off easy. A lovely bike to work on. But how the hell do we get these bearings out of this thing and how do we put some new ones in? Well, I'm going to be covering that off as well. But one of the main things that we need to look at is what bearings do we use when we come to change the bearings in this thing? Mostly, there is two types of bearings to simplify the whole lot. Poor quality, good quality. The main thing that you need to use in your bike is good quality bearings. Now, we're quite lucky because we use a company called Kinetic Bearings who supply uh, all our uh, bearings for our frames. They can supply frame bearing kits for just about every bike uh, you could ever want to work on. So I'll put the link in the description below. I've put a little bit of a, a picture at the top as well. They're a great company to work with, reasonably priced, brilliant quality bearings, which is what we want when we're changing bearings. So first of all, let's look at different types of bearings and what are the differences between the two. On the screen you'll see a diagram. Now there's two bearings in there. Now you don't need to be a rocket scientist really to understand which one's going to be the most expensive bearing. The obvious one is the one with the most balls in there. Now <clears throat> the reason why it's got more, more balls in there is because it's classed as a max bearing. It's a full complement of balls and that means that you're going to get around about 40% a stronger bearing than the other one which has less balls, but also, more importantly, in, on suspension linkages, you need a good distribution of load across the whole bearing. Uh, and the max bearing will give you that, which means it'll last a lot longer. Now, you also, you'll generally find that on max bearings and bearings that are the more expensive type, you'll get a better seal. So I mentioned kinetic bearings earlier on, which we use for our frame bearings. They supply max bearings for frames, okay? So you know you're getting a good quality bearing. So these are all the bearings that we need to replace uh, the ones that's already in this specialised Levo frame. This 12 there, so you, so, so you can imagine we've got quite a bit of work to do. But I've put two bearings here, side by side. This is a really, really cheap bearing. It's the same size. This is an Enduro Max bearing. So I'm spinning this with my hand and I can feel there's quite a lot more restriction in that bearing than there is in this cheap one. So this is obviously a max bearing and this is the, this is the type of feel that we need in our, bear, in our suspension linkages. These are the same, these feel really, really nice and stiff. So I know that there's a full complement of balls in there. Right, so we're back on the bike and we need to look at how we're going to change these bearings in this suspension system. Now, if you imagine 12 bearings is going to take us quite a while to do. So I'm not going to do each, tw each bearing on, uh, on video. We'll do certain ones uh, and we'll just keep coming back and we'll do it that way. Um, now, the main thing is tools with this particular job. You've got to have decent quality tools. Because if you are putting a 6mm Allen key in these, uh, these pivot bolts here, they're aluminium, I know they're hardened, but, but you need a decent fitting tool to be able to make sure that you're not going to start to round those off. Because you don't want to be having to replace those as well as your bearings. So, so tools are important. The second thing is the extraction system, how we're going to get these bearings out of here. So these little bad boys are the tools that you'll need to be able to take those bearings out of this specialized levo and put new ones in the, the great thing about these is they will put bearings in 
nice and square in your frame, which is really important because you don't want to damage the housing of your frame. You don't want to start taking paint off and things, but also you don't want to damage the bearing. So it's important that they go in square. So these will make sure that that happens. So we'll put them to one side uh, and we'll look at starting to take these pivot bolts out. So I've taken the back wheel out, which makes it a little bit easier for us to work on this area. Uh, and I'm going to undo all these bolts here, these six mil Allen key bolts. Uh, I'm going to leave this back one in uh, until I start to check the chain ring off. That's going to be easier to work on this pit main pivot here uh, with this chain ring out of the way. So let's go and undo these. Now the main thing is make sure that your, your six mil Allen key is actually well, perfectly uh, seated in the, uh, in the slot and you just need to turn those. If you feel loads and loads of restriction, then stop, okay? I'll just gradually undo those and I'll put them to one side. Now obviously these will go back together <coughs> uh, all talked up and everything, so I can actually feel that when I turn these, I can feel that these bearings are quite notchy. I can feel them when I'm undoing these bolts. So I'll just loosen that one off. But I won't take it right out for now. So we've got all, that, all those out the other side. You need to be careful, obviously, because there's little spaces inside here. So be careful that they don't drop out and you lose them. You need to put them to one side and we'll give them a clean before we put them back. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this chain ring off so we can actually get to this main pivot here. Okay, that's that out of the way. We'll just lift this little chain device up here. Get that out of the way. Don't need to take it off, just get it out of the way, lift it up. That's it. So we'll take the chain ring off. This is specific to this particular tool, this chain ring. Now this is a brilliant tool. If you're doing a lot of work on your bike, you've got to buy one of these. It's absolutely amazing. It's got like a little retracting bolt inside. See if you can see that. Um, it's got a little retracting bolt inside which makes sure that the teeth are engaged in your lock ring. Uh, it's brilliant and you just offer it up there, get a screwdriver, screw it in, locate the pins and it doesn't come out. It's amazing, it's a brilliant thing. All other um, motors, Shimano and Bosch, uh, have opposite threads, so righty tighty lefty loose is his opposite uh, on Bosch and Shimano. This is undone in a normal fashion. You go left to undo. Okay, and when it's fully off, just take your screwdriver, unscrew it. Sometimes these chain rings can take a little bit of getting off, so you might need a little bit of a puller. You can actually get them off uh, by just levering them slightly, but I prefer to do it this way. It doesn't cause any damage when it comes off, uh, and it pulls it off from the back, rather than kind of awkwardly via the levering method. That's it, off. Now that one were quite tight on. That hadn't been off, that hadn't been off there for a long time, hadn't that? Anyway, that's off now. So, now we can get access to this particular pivot here without any particular problems. No need to worry about uh, damaging anything else down there. So, let's take the chain off. And then we can put that to one side and that's not in as way. Do you know, one day I'm going to do a video on tool comparison. This is a, a little tool, it's made by Shimano, uh, and it's to disconnect uh, 
missing links out of chains. Really easy to use. You just put it in and it crushes it over, squashes it over and takes the link out. And you can actually put the links back in with the other teeth as well. It's an amazing thing. So what we can do now then is we can actually undo uh, the re the, these other two here that we started and didn't finish. Now you need to bear in mind again that there'll be spaces in here. Okay, so get your bolts out and put them to one side. See if we can catch them. Uh, they're stuck in there, so that's not too bad. There's one. There's the other. There's another one there. On that side. And another one there. This piece here, uh, this suspension linkage here from the bottom of the shock, you can leave that in its place. These particular spacers only go one way back. You can see, I don't know whether you can actually see that, but it's slightly chamfered. So obviously this needs to go back the right way around. Uh, the bit that faces the bearing in, in a race is obviously the smaller the smaller side. But we'll come back to that when we put it back together. Okay. Again, remembering to keep those spaces to one side. Don't lose those. So we've got this little dog bone section out here uh, with six bearings in there. So we're going to take that back to the bench and we're going to use those bearing tools to extract those out and I'll show you how they work. So we'll just give this a bit of a clean. So we get us bolt through the housing, through the bearing housing there. And then we put that over the side where the bearing comes out from. Put us back part on. Okay. Put us little tool in to stop it turning. Okay. And don't need that bar on there. And we just make sure that it's all central, make sure it's all nice and square, and we just pull and turn at the same time with that really nice and easily. Here we are. One bearing, no damage. Perfect. Okay, and we do exactly the same with the others. Okay. So we might as well get them all out at the same time. So I've cleaned uh, this linkage in the parts washer. Got it all nice and clean, got all the grit and the dirt off and now it's ready to actually go ahead and press our new bearings in. Now these are the six bearings that came out as you saw me taking them out and they feel horrible to be honest. Uh, they were definitely ready for changing. So we'll put them to one side, we've got us new ones here, we need six. That's it. And then what we're going to use, we're going to put some really decent uh, like a marine type grease uh, on the housings so they actually go in nice and uh, nice and square and easily and then we're also going to put some marine grease on the outside as well just to kind of stop any water ingress that actually might get in there in future that's the uh, part that we need to use to put the new bearing in okay that nice and square on there Get the other side. Whoop. It's hard when you're doing it when the camera's in front of you. Okay, so screw that up. Okay, now the key is to make sure this goes in really nice and square. And this is the beauty about this tool. 
Uh, it's very difficult to get it wrong. Uh, but if you start to feel any restriction, when you're pushing that bearing in there, you need to stop. Because if you carry on, you'll never get that bearing out again. You'll damage your, heart, your, your linkage and you'll damage the bearing as well. So as, you, as soon as you start to push on these inner races, you'll damage the balls inside. Okay, and we'll get that on the back so it's not going to move. And I hope you can see this. Okay, and then, okay, that'll go in nice and easy. You can actually feel how nice it actually goes in. And that's going all the way home, right into the housing. You can feel when it doesn't go any further. You don't need to put any pressure on it hardly at all. And that goes nicely in there. Take that out. Perfect, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. So we've got all those back in. There's six brand new bearings in there. Nice and neat. No marks. Snug as a bug in a rug. So what we need to do now is let's go back to frame. So the next thing that we need to do is what we're going to do is we're going to actually put this uh, dog bone link back in here because it will actually help us hold the back end in place while we work on this uh, this main pivot. Now that we've got all them we'll just leave them loose for now and what we'll do is we'll have a look at this bottom one here and we'll do this one next. So again undo it very carefully. And there is spaces in this one as well, so... That's it, it should come out fairly easy. Again, if it's really, really getting stiff, just stop. And if you're really struggling, just contact your local bike shop and they'll be able to help you with it. Out with a little brass drift and you can see there's actually, that's actually been running pretty dry. It's all right at the minute, but it's definitely starting to wear. Okay, so that, that the, the other good, one of the main reasons for changing your bearings often, uh, this particular pivot, this is one of the main ones that takes loads and loads of load. So it's worth changing them often. Again, we can just lift this up to one one side can you see i've created uh i've created a little bit of space a little bit of maneuverability there with the with the magnet sensor wire on the on the back i've loosened this hose so this will give us a bit more maneuverability as well so we just need to carefully just pull this out to one side just enough so we can actually get to them bearings Okay, if you still can't get enough after loosening that hose, then you need to take the caliper off and then that will allow some more space as well uh, for you to get this, uh, these bearings out. Okay, now we're going to need to take this caliper off because there's not enough space for us. Plenty of room now, can you see? So we've got access to this particular bearing here. Now I've just come back to this section here because if you remember we've just actually moved this chain, uh, this chain stay out of the way so we can actually get these bearings out and we've pulled this pin out here uh, which uh, I showed you before. Now on either side of this pin there is a spacer. Now the one on the left, sorry the one on the right seems to be all intact but the one on the left is missing completely. Okay, so there's the little spacer. That's the one that we're actually on the right hand side. But the one on the left, which goes there, is completely missing uh, altogether. Which really, that particular part it plays a big part, but the, well, this, sorry, this particular part plays a big role in this suspension linkage in terms of actually keeping it all straight. So, how 
uh, that's come to be missing. I have no idea. Obviously, somebody's taken it to bits before and not put that part back. Um, so what we need to do is this particular piece um, is available. It comes part of a kit from Specialized. Um, but having said that, it comes with the pins, uh, the bolts for the suspension linkages on the dog bone as well. Um, but it's 90 odd quid as a kit, which seems such a lot of money to actually pay for this particular spacer because all the other bolts are, put, are bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on the lathe and I'm going to make a spacer just like that one so we can actually put this back together. Uh, and then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little rubber o-ring and I'm going to put that round the side because there's a little rubber flange on the existing one. So I'm going to get a little bit little o-ring and just put that round the side to stop any water getting in. And that should, uh, that should uh, help us... Um, put this bike back together. So we'll bob this in the lathe and we'll face this this end off here first so we can actually get a, a nice finish on there before we start. So Just about a perfect copy of what's missing on that bike apart from it's black. So there we are. So now that we've sorted that little bad boy out, what we need to do next, next is take those two bearings out of that main pivot at the bottom. So let's do that now. Now if you've watched the Shrek Rail videos before, you'll know that these particular bearings, there's two ways we can actually get these out. We can actually use a drift, uh, which is the easiest way of getting them out, uh, or we can use a blind bearing puller, which you saw us do on the Trek rail. I think the easiest way of doing it in the, on this particular bike is we're gonna use a drift. Uh, there's an inner sleeve on the inside, so we don't need to uh, worry about uh, damaging anything in there. We just need to obviously go careful will go around the edges of each particular bearing so we'll, they'll gradually come out squarely. So we'll just give these a really good coat of nice sticky grease. Pop that back in there. Put some grease around the outside. Put some on the bearing as well. And then we'll use a different press to actually press this back in there. We'll do one each side. We'll do one, sorry, we'll do one, we'll do each, what, eight, what? We'll do one side at a time. That's what I meant to say. Okay. And we'll just gradually nice and square just push this back in until it stops that's it don't need to go any further with that and then we'll do the other side exactly the same and just press that side in exactly the same goes in nice and square it's worth buying good tools so it means it makes it much easier for you, less fuss, safer, and no damage. So that's them two in. We'll put a new spacer in there. Okay. And we'll put the existing one at this side. Okay, and we'll just slide this back over in its place. And it should slide over. Okay, that lines up pretty nice. There we are. What 
we'll do is we'll put a little bit of uh, Loctite on the other side. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna leave that pretty loose, uh, but that works brilliant, does that? Um, so next thing that we that we need to do is let's move on to back end, and we'll do these. Uh, uh, I call them articulate bearings. <coughs> so the way we get these bearings out of this. Uh, chain say we'll use as, as blind bearing puller from this side uh, and then we'll be able to tap that side out with a drift pull that side out with a bearing puller and that side out with a drift there's a little washer in the middle so don't get to thinking that you can actually put your bearing press and push the whole lot through because <coughs> you won't be able to do it and you'll damage the the uh, the top uh, seat stay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get us slide hammer tool on these and pull these out put some new ones back and then we'll put it back together and I'll come back when I've done that these new bearings are now in you've just seen me press them in uh, we've got these four washers uh, two on either side that we need to put back we need to put loads of grease round the sides to stop any water getting in you can never put too much grease on there you can always wipe it off at sides if you've got too much on there okay and then we can just slide that back in its place being careful not to dislodge them spaces There we are, that goes in there nice and easy, which is how we want it to do, okay? Now we take us bolts, we're out of focus. We take us bolts and we need to put these two bolts back in, uh, put some Loctite and then we'll torque them up uh, when we come to torque the rest up. So let's get them bolts back in. A little bit of grease on the side of the bolt. Don't forget the one with the screw on the end goes on the right hand side uh, <coughs> at the bottom. And the one, the flat bottomed one goes on this side, on the left hand side. We'll just put a little bit of uh, Loctite on them side, on them sides, them threads. You don't need a lot. That's it. Just very carefully tighten these up. Make sure that they're actually going in the threads at the other side again. If you're having to force it or it doesn't feel right or there's a lot of restriction there, then you're not going in the right place. And that you've got a danger of crossing them threads. You can definitely feel when it goes in the right place because it goes in really easy. Same on the other side. There we are, nice and easy. Okay. So now, all that's left to do now basically is to go around all these bolts, put Loctite on the bolts that you've actually not put Loctite on them, and then double check 
the torque specifications for the bike that you're actually working on. If it's a specialized bike, then go to specialized and it'll give you all the torque settings for all the, the particular bolts. Hey, what I do, I would have thought you'd have had to make a spacer to be able to work uh, to finish this particular bike. But nevertheless, we have to do what we have to do. And it saved a load of money for this customer. Otherwise, I'd have had to spend 90 odd quid uh, on a, a pin kit. So uh, it's not often we have to do that. But nevertheless, we do what we need to do. So um, I hope you enjoyed that. Please take a look at Kinetic Bearings website. They have loads and loads of frame kits. Uh, and they're all max compliant as well, which is what we were talking about earlier on. So take a look at theirs. The link's in the description. So on that note, I will say enjoy your week, whatever you're doing. Total pip. See you later.